Hi there, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. Sorry, I've been away for a bit. Unfortunately, this whole Crayola virus, Cronola virus, whatever, COVID-19, at least it's not Bud Light line, right? Let's just be honest here. So, this video, I don't even know if I'll get through like the YouTube censors because I've, I've said the bad C word. Not that one, the, the Crayola virus. Let's just talk about the COVID-19, some common sense, um, some confusion, and then some conspiracies. So we'll start out with the conspiracies, just to go out of order. There are so many ridiculous, farcical, unsubstantiated conspiracies about this. So I'm not going to leave any links to any article so those places don't get any traffic. If you want to research them, you can. Basically, everybody, I think, has been blamed for this in some way. So one celebrity said that it's a conspiracy, that it's a bioengineered weapon to eliminate the baby boomers. That generation. Um, I don't know how she comes up with this. Um... There's another school of thought that says that this is a bioweapon created in a Chinese weapons lab. There's another conspiracy that says it was created in an American weapons lab and then transported to China to do like a false flag kind of deal. Um, a televangelist said it's from those lady juices, those evil lady juices. You people putting your tongues on the lady parts, it's creating those lady juices. Um, then, of course, the gays. Hey, you guys get blamed for everything by them. Um, the Jews have been blamed because it's Israel doing it to help bring around the um, um, apocalypse in Armageddon. Uh, you know, then I've heard one rumor, uh, a couple conspiracy theories about the Bob and Doug McKenzie um, Laboratory for the Study of Hops and Barley Sciences. Uh, out in um, Kicking Horse Pass, Yukon. It was created there. Who knows? Um, there are so many ridiculous things going around right now. Let's just be realistic here. The only conspiracy about the COVID-19 uh, uh, or uh, coronavirus is the fact that people don't get that this is a thing. Right? This isn't a bioengineered event. This isn't you know, something that's designed to kill anyone specific off. This is that 100-year event. If you look through history, uh, now we've gotten better post-1930, 1950s, but before you had the swine flu, you had SARS, uh, those weren't as big as this. But the biggest event would have been, and I'm going to go back to the Spanish flu, right? The Spanish influenza sometime between 1917 and 1920, 25, somewhere in there. But before that, in the 1890s, you had cholera and you had smallpox and you had yellow fever. And then you had the bubonic plague a couple of times. It was so good. It had to come back for a reunion tour. So this is a natural cyclical event. This is what's supposed to happen in nature. So this conspiracy is brought to you by Mother Nature. So, right? And, and that's just the reality of it. There is no conspiracy. Um, this isn't an event designed to take away your civil liberties or infringe upon your civil rights or any of that nonsense. Isolation, quarantine, and distancing is what will mitigate the advancement of this event. And if anyone's looking for some really good data, I suggest you look at Prince Edward Island. So for those of you that don't know Canada, Prince Edward Island is the only province that is an actual island. The entire thing is an island. Um, if you're not from Prince Edward Island, you're from away. So they were able to shut the island down so only people that were allowed to get on the island were allowed on the island. So they were able to stop transient movement fairly quickly. They have effectively contained their outbreak because they were able to socially isolate, distance, and quarantine. Now let's talk about some of the confusion. The confusion is this. The World Health Organization has said one thing. 
Um, other organizations have said other things. Some people don't believe those organizations because of the conspiracy due to reasons, because of things. You then have people like the Cheeto-stained orangutan that is a ferret glued to his head by the name of Mr. Trump. He just pontificates these bullshitteries. Um, he makes medical statements that have no basis in fact about maybe a malaria drug will work, maybe this drug will work. Um, who knows, right? Uh, unfortunately... I don't, and this is me, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a virologist, I've not even played one on TV. Although I have watched Outbreak, um, I have watched uh, 28 Days Later, I've watched the Andromeda stream, the original and the remake, um, I've watched um, Contagion, um, and a few other movies like that, so I'm kind of up on the knowledge about these things, because I watched a lot of the movies. Um, July? Maybe? We go back to normal? Who knows, right? So, there's a lot of confusion. Um, I've recently read a couple of different studies that said there may be some indication of COVID-19 and stroke. I've read other studies that say no, so I'm going to do uh, an episode about that shortly once I can read the studies and actually try to interpolate it into English uh, that's meaningful. So, there's a lot of confusion right now. Um, we recently just got a rapid screening test. Um, you've got people doing stupid things like spitting on people, um, telling their workplace they have COVID-19 when they don't have it so they can get out of working. You have people licking things in supermarkets. Um, there's a lot of just dumbness going on right now. Right? The best thing you can do is, is stay home as much as possible. Limit your interactions with the outside world. Decontaminate yourself when you come back into your home. And just, like, dude, Netflix and chill. Or Crave, or BritBox, or Hulu, or Amazon Prime, or for those of you that happen to have a laser disc collection, fill your boots. Um, it's... It just boggles the mind right now. Um, and I know that this is a stressful period. I know that even for those of us that aren't brain injured or neurologically impaired, that haven't had a stroke or a brain injury, being stuck at home constantly, because a lot of people have been able to shift to work from home. <clears throat> a lot of people are unfortunately not able to shift to work from home, so they're just not able to go to work. And then you get those people that are required to go to work day in, day out. The 911 dispatcher operators, the people that answer the phone, you know, when you dial 911 or 999 or whatever it is, and they, they ask, hey, police, fire, ambulance, what's your emergency, right? And then they get you into the right queue for who needs to help you. Then you get the paramedics, you get the firefighters, you get the, the police, you get your nurses, your doctors, your PSWs, your porters, all the people in that mechanical machine called the hospitals. And then, you know, right now the military, uh, and then Canada, it's the regular force, the reserves, and then the rangers, not um, what you think if you're an American ranger, but our northern rangers, our, our native um, First Nations people that are part of the Canadian Ranger program. Again, not what you're thinking of wearing a tab if you're an American. And then in the States, you've got the National Guard, you've got the reserves, and you've got your regular forces. Right. And same thing in England and Germany and France and all over the world. The people that are right now being told by their chain of command to either go home, lock your doors and only come to work when we call you. Or they've been told by their chain of command, you need to come in and stack pallets. And we're not getting done till we get 300 pallets done. And then you'll probably get called in again to do another 300 pallets. So to all those people that have to go to work, including your grocery store clerks, your gas station clerks, People that do some of the day in, day out sort of debris of life that we have just taken for granted for so long. You know, for you guys that have to go out every day and expose yourself to whatever could be out in the world right now, um, thank you. Right? You're doing something that is risky but necessary. And my hat goes off, off to you and my heart goes out to you. And, and I hope you're all safe and well. 
Now, let's just talk common sense, right? Because we talked about the conspiracy and the confusion. The common sense piece is stay home, limit your interactions. If you think you present with some of the symptoms of COVID-19, please immediately take the steps that you're required to take. <clears throat> um, go to your nearest COVID-19 assessment center, or you might have to do like a, a telephone screening first or whatever it is in your area, but please take the appropriate steps. Try to minimize your exposure to the rest of the world. And as soon as one person in a household gets COVID-19, the entire household now needs to self-contain and self-quarantine because you don't know who that might be passed on. So I appreciate being, in all cases, trapped in the same household, not able to do any of your own functioning. Like, you can't get groceries, you can't go to the store. You know, and I understand how difficult that would be. And for those of us that had a stroke, we also understand that because there's been times where, you know, you haven't been able to um, do things because of the impairment due to your stroke. I, I've had to do that and I know it's extremely difficult. But just be good to each other. Take care of each other. Um, I'm going to do an episode about um, COVID-19 and anxiety. Because uh, even for those of us that have an anxiety disorder, this is still causing anxiety. For those of us that don't have an anxiety disorder, this is causing more anxiety. So I'll do an episode about that. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover, uh, please mention it down in the comments down below. Or you can email, email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Or you can get me on Twitter. Uh, I'm unfortunately there. I'm a salter stroke. I'm not sure why. Um, and then on Instagram, I'm stroke assaulter. So that's where you can find me there. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, please do so. If you have any suggestions for content, again, leave it down below. If you'd like to leave any comments, please do, do it, leave it down below. Like, how are you guys dealing with now being trapped at home? Um, you know, being stuck at home, being forced to be at home. Um, how about for those appointments that got canceled for your physio, your speech, um, your uh, occupational therapy, uh, neuropsychology, neuropsychiatry, you know, some of those specialist things that take a while to get into. How are you guys dealing with not being able to go to your appointments? I can only imagine how frustrating that is and how much of a setback that can be as well, because all those months you've been making gains. Now you're kind of not able to go. Or if you are able to go, you've basically got to slather yourself in antibacterial gel and then put on a special suit and go to your appointments and then slather yourself in the antibacterial gel and take a shower when you get home. So, try not to get your head too trapped in the media because they're just reporting numbers and a lot of those numbers don't have context. Um, a lot of those numbers sound incredibly large. A lot of those numbers sound um, not realistic. Like you, you can't really understand what that number is because it's so large. It just doesn't make sense. Try not to, you know, just get hung up about it because otherwise you're just going to spin all day long. And on that note, if you happen to have been enjoying what you've been watching um, and you'd like to see more, please like, share, subscribe. If you happen to know someone that's going through the journey uh, after a stroke or a brain injury, please point the channel out to them. They might get some benefit out of the content I generate. Get them to like, share, and subscribe as well. Uh, if you happen to know someone that is supporting someone that is going through the recovery of a stroke or a brain injury, again, point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of the content there. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs and symptoms of a stroke, now it's been a while, so let's see if I can remember this. Uh, they have balance problems. They immediately uh, unbalanced or confused or a little bit befuddled. Um, you know, or they have vision problems. There's something wrong with their eyes. They can't see it in one eye. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. They only see in grayscale. They see a little dot in the world. Uh, someone has facial droop. There's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles on one side. Someone that can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context, or you can't understand speech. Uh, Someone who has the inability to stand unaided, uh, has general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.